Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Well, in our last video, we showed you how to create this button background animated effect here. We had a great question. Somebody asked if we could use this on our menu item. Simple answer is, yeah, absolutely. Now we've got to modify it a little bit, but as you can see, we can do that up there really easily. So let's get started. To do this today, I'm going to go to our theme customizer. For anybody that doesn't know where that is, if we go back to the dashboard, go down to appearance and customize. Now this code that I'm going to write today, you can also put in Divi theme options at the bottom. You'll find a custom CSS box. You can put it here if you want to. I'm using the customizer today so we can see what's going on in real time. Okay, and once you get your customizer, you'll see here down at the bottom is your additional CSS panel. There's the code that I've written. Let's just delete this. At the moment, we've got that horror effect. If I delete this, we'll publish and refresh the page. And we're back to our normal Divi menu. Now I'm using the default Divi menu for this today. If you're using a custom header or something like that, you'll need to inspect and you may have a different class name or ID than we're going to be using today. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is inspect this and find out the ID or class name of our little menu items up here. So I'm going to hit inspect. I'm using Google Chrome here with the great inspector tools. If you've got elements selected one side, you've got HTML. If you've got styles selected on the other side, you've got CSS. Now, most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, Chrome is a free download. OK, well, we're dealing with our anchor tags here, but it's under a subheading of an ID of ET top nav. You could use top menu also if you wanted to. I'm going to use top nav. So I'm going to grab that CSS ID right there. Double click, control C to copy. It's a CSS ID. All CSS IDs have a hashtag in front of them. So you've got to put a hashtag. Then the CSS ID itself. Now we want to actually affect the anchor tag or the A tag that's under our ET top nav there. So I'm going to put a gap and an A. Now we're targeting our anchor tags here. Fantastic. And with our buttons, we use the pseudo element, CSS pseudo element of before, and this will all become apparent. So let's just open, close some curly brackets after this so we can put some code in there in a minute. I'm going to grab this again. Control C to copy. I'm going to paste it down below itself. Right after the A there with no gap, I'm going to put a colon. I'm going to put the word before. So now we can add some code to the before pseudo element of our ET top navigation A or link. So we can go back in and we can steal the code that we use for these buttons right here. So let's enable the visual builder. Once enabled, we can go down to one of our buttons, go into the button itself. Over to the advanced custom CSS. The module elements is where we pasted our before code. So we can just copy this code. I'm going to select all of it. Control A, Control C to copy. Now, if you haven't done this and don't have this code from yesterday's video, I'll put any code I write down below the video today and you can copy and paste. I would suggest that you go through the motions though and learn how to do this. It's a fantastic thing to learn really easy too. So I've got my code there. Go back to my customizer. I'm going to paste it in where we just added that before in between the curly brackets there. Let's get rid of these notes here. And you may have noticed up on top there, we've already got a little thing happening. Now, if we look back at our code here, over in the hover state of it, we change the left position to zero. So I'm going to copy left zero, control C again to copy. And we're missing a curly bracket on the end there. So let's make sure we got that one in there. Now I need to create a hover state for this. 
So I'm going to copy this line of code up here. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to paste it in there. Just after the A again, I'm going to put another colon and the word hover. We've got a hover state for that before now. Let's open and close some curly brackets. Or we can add this little line of code here, left zero, which brings that little sliding color back to the left hand side again. If I paste that in there now, when I hover over, you can see it's sliding back in. But of course, we don't want to see any of this stuff when it hovers over. And to hide that overflow there, I'm going to go into my regular one up here, the A. I'm going to say overflow, colon, hidden. As you can see, or as you can't see, because it's disappeared, it's disappeared. And when we hover back over, it's pulling it up in there. But it's not really the shape or size that I want it. I want it much more like our buttons were down here. But without the initial color. So to do that, we can actually add some padding to this to make it look a little bit more like that. So make sure you've got a semicolon on the end. If you don't put one, it won't read the next line of code. Let's add a bit of padding to it. Let's say padding. Let's say 10 pixels top and bottom. Uh, 15 pixels left and right. That's looking a bit more like it, but we've got all this space down at the bottom there. So if we look back at our anchor tag here, yeah, we've still got a lot of padding on the bottom there. Let's make this important. because If I hover over it, you see the green is the padding. We've got way too much on the bottom there. So I'm going to make this important so it overrides the styles that are going on there. Exclamation mark, important. That's more like it. it's turned it more into the button shape that we want. Let's put a little semicolon on the end of there. It's kind of changed this, the way our little menu is displaying here. So I need to add a bit of margin on the bottom. If we look up here at the top nav, it's got a padding top of 33 picks. We've given ours 10 top and bottom, so let's give it 23 pixels minus that 10 there, margin on the bottom. So let's go down, we'll say margin, dash bottom, and we'll say that's 23 pixels. Yeah, that's looking okay. But we've got a bit of a problem, our color's happening there. But it's going over the top of our menu item, so we can't really read it. So to fix that, we can do that with a bit of Z index. So remember our color codes in our before over here. Now Z index dictates what elements stack on top of other elements. A Z in, an element with a Z index of four will always appear on top of an element with a Z index of three. Highest number will always appear on top. So let's give this a Z dash index negative one. That way it should let our menu item pop on top there. So now when I hover, yeah, that's great. We can see our little menu item appearing there. But I'd like to change the color of that item from dark to light. It doesn't look like it's fully visible there. It looks like the opacity is down on it. And also, I'd like to give these red bits a bit of corner. I'm going to change that red color in a minute to my logo blue, I believe. So if you want to give these slightly curled corners, in our regular state, the A right there, put a semicolon. We can give it a border radius. I think the default divvy is sort of six pixels. So if I put six pixels in there, We've got slightly curved corners. If you want them really curved or built pill shape, you can put something like 50 pixels in there. And you've got a little pill shape button. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to take mine back down to six. And when they hover over it, I want that perhaps dark writing to change to a light writing. I think it'll be easier to read, especially when I change this to a blue color in a moment. So let's copy this. It's our actual anchor tag that we're affecting that we want to change the color. So I'm going to copy that. 
I'm going to put this above. It doesn't really matter. I'm just want to put it above so it's close to it. I'm going to put a colon and the word hover. So we've got a hover state for it. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets right there. I'm going to say color white, which is hashtag FFF in CSS3. Yep, that's working fine. Fantastic. Now let's change that color to our logo blue there. I've got a free color picker up here. Just a Chrome free color picker. Get that color. I'm going to copy it. Get rid of that. And here's the red color we had going on here at the moment. Let's change that to a blue. Paste that hex code in there. Or you can use the RGBA or just a web color if you want to. That's great. But it's not showing up fully blue to me. It's like the opacity is down on it. Let's just inspect this. I think it's probably our list item here. Bring this up just a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Now we'll get up the hover state. Click on hover over here and check the hover box. Let's go back on our link here. Here we are, top menu, nav, hover. Opacity 7. If we change that to a 1, it'll be fully visible. Just like that. Fantastic. So what we need to do is we'll just copy this from the hashtag. All the way down to the closing bracket there. Control C. Let's roll this down under our last entry here. I'll paste it back in there. And the only thing I need in there is the opacity itself. I can delete anything else. Make sure it's on 1. Now when we hover over, it should stay like that. Perfect. We can get rid of our hover state now. To me, that's looking like it's pretty much good to go. So let's publish our code there. We'll exit the inspector tools. And this code I'll paste down below the video. As I mentioned several times, it's a great idea to get in the habit of actually building this yourself so you learn how to do this. It's a wonderful thing to learn. It's really not difficult. And editing things in the Chrome Inspector is a great way to do things to test out ideas before you actually write them. As you can see, you can change anything around any way that you want here. But this is what they call non-destructive. So once you refresh the page, that will go back to how it was. And your code will not be recognized until you hit that publish button up there. So let's go back to our page. We'll get rid of all this junk. We'll exit the visual builder. Discard any changes. And we should have a little blue hover effect over there. And our link turning white like that. Fantastic. So I hope that's answered that question. You can certainly use this code and have that effect on your menu items if that's what you want. That's great. Well, in our next video, we're going to show you how to re reuse this code once again and apply it to any module you want. Really easy to do. Really nice little effect to have on your site. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, take a look at our little menu effects playlist. It's going to appear on the left hand side any minute now. We've got some wonderful little animations and things for your menus there, most of which I've done for you. They're all really easy to do too. So if you have enjoyed this today, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.